Hey everyone, Brian Botkiller here, and in Tech Tuesday today, giving you guys a look at the AS Rock X99 Extreme 6 uh, motherboard from AS Rock. This is an X99 motherboard, so it's going to support 2011 V3 uh, chips, CPUs from Intel, and it supports up to 128 gigs of RAM on the motherboard. And so this is this is pretty awesome. I really like AS Rock motherboards. I'm going to be straight up about that. Um, I think they've gotten a bad um, rep sometimes, and I don't really know why. Uh, their boards are very cost-effective, I think, and um, somehow, for some reason or another, always boot faster than almost any motherboard I have ever run into. I don't know why, um, because I tweak them all the same, but something about AS Rock motherboards, they boot really fast. So, uh, I don't know, I haven't actually built with this one. Um, I'm just doing an unboxing here for you guys. And, uh, you know, I figure, hey, let's see what uh, this one is all about. Uh, it does have eight DDR4 RAM slots, as you can see. It supports M2, uh, Gen 3 by 4, and SATA 3, so you can do those super fast M2 drives on this system. It also has dual LAN, which is kind of cool. And um, it's going to support the usual round of stuff, AMD Crossfire, NVIDIA SLI, and etc. So let's get in and unbox this thing. So first of all, just to look at the packaging. Front, side, back, side, and the back back. So as with most motherboards, of course, there's all the usual salesy kind of junk on the back of this board. Um, which I always think is funny because let's face it, like how many of us go and look at motherboards in brick and mortar shops <laughs> where we need to flip it over and look at all this stuff but um, it's there you know and lots of good salesy stuff talking about how great the caps are and etc etc anyway you guys don't really care about that what you care about is seeing the board so I did say I haven't installed this but I did not say I had not opened it because I have um, I needed to take a look at it and just see what I had so it looks a little bit of mess on the inside and I'm sorry about that but that's what happens when you do what I do inside we have a couple of couple packs of SATA cables and some power converters a uh, that is a what the heck is this oh, well, it is of course an SLI bridge so we always need lots of SLI bridges more bridging Manuals, setup guide, driver disk, etc., etc. Get the latest drivers from the website anyway. Um, seeing this more and more, little screws included for little things that you're not always going to use. Back panel, nice one. Um, not with that kind of like foam back end, back side that we see sometimes on some gigabyte ones, but um, you know, still nice enough color-coded at least, and not just the regular steel or aluminum that we usually see. And the board. All right, let's uh, get the box out of the way here. So uh, AS Rock does this a lot where they make you clip these little um, zip ties to get the board off of the foam backing, which is fine, and at least it makes sure that the thing doesn't go anywhere. Um, but once you get in, you have your board. Now, uh, let's just get in and look a little bit closer here. Alright, so starting on the south bridge, we've got the audio connector, front panel audio connector, right on the bottom left hand corner of the south bridge. That is cool. I really do prefer that personally over um, when the audio panel connector is further up on the motherboard. It's a little easier to connect to, especially when you're hiding wires. Uh, next we've got a uh, TPMS connector. I don't think many of you are ever going to use that, um, but if you do trusted computing, it is there. Next up we have a Thunderbolt connector. So this is great because this board is capable of supporting Thunderbolt. 
And um, so it can do that through an add-in card, a PCIe add-in card. You add that card in and connect it to that header, and boom. You have a COM1 connector, a, um, a clear CMOS uh, jumper, a BIOS selector, so there's dual BIOS options on this, front panel USB connectors, two fan connectors, which is nice. I like lots and lots of fan connectors. Dedicated buttons for reset and power, great for building outside of a case, testing, things like that. And then your front panel connectors for power and etc. You also get a LCD to give you uh, error code information and things like that, which is also quite useful. We'll look real quickly at the ports that are available, slots available on this board. Uh, so we do have three PCIe's. Uh, full size, and we have two of the pint size PCIe's. Uh, no PCI, PCI just really doesn't exist in X99, guys. There's your Ultra M2 connector for connecting M2 drives and devices, things like that. Uh, audio chipset is over here. It's the Purity Sound 2 chipset. I don't honestly care too much about getting into the sound chips on motherboards because I never ever use them, but they are there. Moving on to SATA connectors, we've got 10 SATA 3 connectors, which is great. Uh, you're going to notice that you don't have any of the newer generation of SATA connectors, but I really think that's okay um, because, again, I don't think that's something a lot of folks are going to end up using. Another fan header, two USB 3 front port uh, connectors, your ATX connector power block, and an internal USB port. Kind of interesting. Don't see that very often, but it's there. Uh, kind of cool. Uh, moving on up to the North Bridge. Relatively large heatsink on here, so make sure you're using a CPU cooler that will not run into issues with that. Most shouldn't, but it's just worth uh, you know taking into consideration. Eight RAM slots, as I was talking about, supports DDR4 uh, quad channel RAM up to 128 gigabytes. Uh, you're going to find way up on the north bridge. You'll find uh, more fan connectors. CPU fan connector, and then a second CPU fan connector, good for water-cooled systems, things like that. 12-volt rails right here. Uh, nice heat piping between uh, the heat sink that you have here on the west side of the board and the heat sink that you have on the north side. Um, nice little heat pipe right there. So I, I, you know, again, with the size of these heat sinks, I'm gonna assume that this thing should cool pretty well. And then we'll look at the back panel. And on the back panel, we're gonna find two USB 2s, a PS2, combo PS2 mouse keyboard port, uh, another clear BIOS, clear CMOS uh, button here. So you got the jumper and then you got the button. Uh, six USB 3.0 ports, eSATA, which is cool because I haven't been seeing eSATA as much lately on X99, so it's nice to see that. Dual LAN and your audio outs. And that is essentially it. Uh, of course, you have your socket 2011 V3 uh, socket for your chip, for your CPU pretty standard and next to that you've got another fan connector as well as a molex uh, connector for power this is for supplying additional power to the pcie bus should you need to do that probably don't need to do that unless you're doing multiple video card setups um, but it is there i don't usually use that because i don't see a need to but it's there should you end up needing it Overall, really nice looking board. Um, you know, I, I love the aesthetics of it. I think the blue is just uh, awesome. I do like it when there's a little bit of, you know, uh, aesthetically pleasing features to a motherboard. Uh, really liking the layout of the port connectors and things like that. Easy to reach. Lots of fan connectors, which is awesome. Love that it supports 128 gigs of RAM. Uh, that you cannot beat, I think. And, uh, you know, overall, it just seems to be a really nice board. I'll build with it, and if I have any weirdness or anything like that, of course, I will let you guys know. But um, overall, I think we're looking at something pretty good here. Oh, one more thing I should mention that I did not with slots. Sorry about this. 
mini PCIe by one right here. Uh, don't know how many of you are going to end up using that, but that can be useful for things like adding in Wi-Fi, some other small things. So you do have that one right there. I think that that probably led to there being a little less PCIe slots on this. I, I kind of wish that maybe there was one more full-size PCIe. It doesn't have to be 16 speed. It could maybe just be you know, operating it by eight or by four or something along those lines, but not a big deal. This is still a pretty good amount of PCIe slots. You can support a ton of video cards in this should you decide to. And um, I do like that this heatsink is not huge. I've been seeing a lot of very large heat sinks near the south bridge of boards lately, and that's a little bit annoying because they very often can get in the way of longer video cards. So I like that this is a little more flush on the board, which is kind of cool. Uh, so anyway, overall, I dig it. I think it's a good looking board. I think it's probably going to be an easy build. I've had very little issues with AS Rock boards. And as I say, they uh, boot faster than any board that I've really ever run into. Uh, you tweak the UAFI just a little bit, turn off some of the erroneous junk, turn on the fast or ultra fast boot option, and I see these things boot up in seconds. Um, on a properly built system. And again, comparing them to some other motherboards, I have never completely understood it. I just, I think that AS Rock, you know, potentially does a little bit more in their UEFI and they don't add in a lot of extraneous junk, which I think is awesome. So we'll see. Hopefully it'll be a good build. Uh, if you guys have questions, comments, etc., please feel free to be in touch. As always, thanks for tuning in here on Tech Tuesday. And uh, make sure to subscribe for more. And, uh, you know, let me know if there's anything that I missed. If you have questions or anything like that, if you've built with this board, tell me your experience. And as always, guys, I am Brian Botkiller. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Take care. You've read